My name is Giseli. I spent 12 years in another church denomination, but I had many problems and my marriage was on the brink of divorce. I was raised by a very strict mother and she found herself alone, having to raise two children. I was 13 years old and my sister was 11. So she raised us to be men as much as women. We had to learn how to do everything at home, how to earn money and so on. What happened then? In my teens, since I didn't have a father figure present, I lacked a sense of security. I had many frustrating boyfriends and relationships that didn't work out. My aunt was a Christian. She evangelized me and I went to another church denomination. I was converted there. I began to attend that church. Sometime later, I met my husband and I deposited all of my hope on my husband. We met, we dated, got engaged and married in merely five months. It all happened very quickly and I thought that my life would get better and that I would now go back to having a home and a happy family. However, the problems began. I had only finished secondary school back then and my husband had already graduated with a business administration degree, but he lost his job and he couldn't hold down other jobs. This brought many problems to our marriage. I would go to church to another denomination. And we did everything correctly. We gave our tithes, we helped in the Sunday school in the morning and went to the meeting in the evening. However, it was as though we were learning a story. I knew the Bible, but I couldn't apply what I had learned to our lives. I thought that I was applying it, but the fact of the matter is that I wasn't because I didn't see results. I didn't see results of this. I would think, I don't think God exists. They say that the Bible is a fairy tale and it must be. It can't be possible because sometimes I see people who are not even Christian and it seems like they have a better life than us. Am I really on the right path? Does God really exist? I had these doubts. I felt like I was a hamster locked in a cage and I would run and run and run and do everything I could, but never got to the cheese. I would get very frustrated, anguished and sad. With this, like it or not, we ended up resentful. We turned into bitter people, like gunpowder. If anyone were to touch me, I had a short fuse or no fuse at all. I argued for no reason. I had no control. And my husband was very emotional. He would want to talk about our relationship. He would cry. And I was harsh in my way of being, like a general. Because he didn't have a wife, he had a general. I thought that I was trying to help. I thought that I was helping him, but I wasn't. I was pushing him further down the well. We spoke different languages. I didn't understand his language. He didn't understand me either. And we clashed constantly. So much so that we ended up fighting. The last time, he grabbed me, I punched him, and he ended up with a black eye. The time came when I said, I want a divorce. There is no other solution or a way out. I have already talked to you, I have tried everything, I want a divorce. However, the same time that I told him that I wanted a divorce, he received an invitation to go to the Universal Church. He told me, listen, I received an invitation, will you go with me? But I was so proud that I told him, no, this is not my problem, it's your problem. I already knew about the Universal Church from television and so on. And I said, it's good, who knows, they may work differently and have some way of putting into my husband's head what I've been unable to do. But I don't need this, I'm not going. This went on for a year. And I became very amazed with my husband. He started going to the Universal Church and he changed. My husband wasn't getting fired from his jobs anymore. He started bringing money into the house and it took a burden off me. He didn't argue with me anymore. He became strong. From a kitten, he became a lion. He would say things would change and so on. I thought, what has he been hearing? My goodness, it's not possible. I ended up falling in love with my husband again, you know? In one year, things hadn't changed yet. 
but we were better. So I said, I will go there. The first time that I stepped into a universal church, I fell in love with it. I saw what the real cause of my problems was, and it wasn't my husband, the world or the government. I saw that it was the evil that was in our lives that we had to fight and learn to live the right way. I went back to being a student in faith. I really liked it when the pastor preaching would say, look at this in the Bible, does this happen in your life? I would think, truly, this doesn't happen. And what about this? And I started to check. He would say, check it. I learned a faith that wasn't emotional. I learned a faith of reason. Then he gave me a recipe. He gave me a secret. He said, look, you will only be able to overcome your problems, to fight and defeat them, if you have the Holy Spirit. I thought, what do you mean the Holy Spirit? Then I said, the Holy Spirit, the seal of God. I don't have it. In my search to know God, I went on to truly put the Word of God into practice. For example, the Bible says whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. I thought, I shouldn't argue. It's not give and take. Because if I was hit, I wouldn't even think of talking. I would hit back. I said, no, I won't hit back. I started thinking, what would the Lord Jesus do in this situation? I started acting this way in every situation. I started praying more, seeking more, and going to the church more. I paid attention in the meetings and put it into practice. And everything that was being said concerning living out the Bible. The Bible was no longer a religious subject where you would read, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. No, no, no. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. If I have a problem, God will provide for me, because it says so here. I started demanding God's promises from him, saying, God, if it's written that you will provide, then you will do so. The next day I would say, my goodness, God has provided. Instead of doubting, arguing, complaining, questioning and murmuring, I started acting like this. I received the Holy Spirit on a Sunday when I was seeking him. It was wonderful because I received the presence of God himself. God visited me and dwelt there. It wasn't something that I felt leaving me. No, it was such peace. It was such tranquility. It was such strength. It was as though he had said, listen, I am with you from now on. That was the turning point. From that point, there was a Giselli before and a Giselli after. First of all, it's all about having God. First of all, you have to have God. Then, I think that what's most important is your marriage. Because if you are not well in your marriage, you are not well. You cannot be well. God blessed my marriage so much that I work with my husband today. We are partners. We are friends. We are companions. What I saw as differences in the past, I see them as a blessing today, because you complement each other. I have learned this. I learned this in the Universal Church. What I don't have, he does, and vice versa. I saw that our differences were not a problem. They were gifts. They were a blessing, meaning that God prepared the right person for me. God blessed us like this. We have a blessed marriage. We have a wonderful son. If I lacked everything before, praise God that I lack nothing today. Anything we need, God provides for us. And in abundance. We have a blessed marriage. I live in a good house. We have a beautiful office. We have employees. God has given us success in our causes, and so on. I don't lack anything, and everything that we have achieved was through God's wisdom and the Holy Spirit. He is everything to me. He is the air I breathe. He is my life. Without the Holy Spirit, I would be nothing. I am nothing. The Holy Spirit is everything, everything to me.